Good morning viewers. I'm again teacher Betty, continuing with the moral concept. We have come to the end of the course unit or of the moral concept. Previously we looked at balancing equations, percentages, empirical formula and molecular formula. We went to the moral concept which involved Avogadro's constant, molality, STP or room temperature and pressure and standard temperature and pressure. Then enthalpy of combustion and finally we are going to look at solubility. To understand solubility we have to understand the following definitions. What is a solute? That is near one work. A solute is a substance that dissolves in a solvent. Anything that dissolves in a solvent is a solute. An example we can give is dissolving sugar in water or dissolving sodium chloride, which is table salt, in water. So whatever dissolves in a solvent is referred to as a solute. And what is a solvent? A solvent is a substance that dissolves a solute. Examples of solvents, we have water, we have ethanol, we have petrol, Paraffin, you can name it, anything that can dissolve a, a solute. So when we dissolve sugar in water, we get a clear solution. So we have said earlier on that sugar is a solute, water is a solvent. Now what is a solution? A solution is a uniform mixture of a solute and a solvent. So now having understood a solution, a solvent and a solute, what is the solubility? Solubility of a solute is the amount in grams of a solute required to saturate 100 grams or 100 cubic centimeters of a solvent at that given temperature. More definitions of unsaturated, saturated and supersaturated solutions. To understand unsaturated, suppose you had a glass of juice in which you added a spoon of sugar. Then you start. That sugar disappeared. You added another spoon of sugar. Again you start. The sugar disappeared. This solution is said to be unsaturated. Why? because whatever you add dissolves. Therefore, unsaturated solution is a solution which can dissolve more solute at that given temperature. But suppose you had your juice in a glass, you added like five spoons of sugar, then you start for a while, and sugar remained in the, in the bowel. So this solution is said to be saturated. So what is a saturated solution? It's a solution which cannot dissolve any more solute at that given temperature. But suppose you had your glass of juice, then you found when your sister has added a lot of sugar in your juice, this solution is said to be super saturated. So what is a super saturated solution? It's a solution which holds more solute than it can dissolve at that given temperature. So you can find application of solubility in the manufacture of solids. So what they do, they put the mixture of solids into a fractionating column and then they cool. The one that has got a low solubility comes off first and is obtained, then they continue to cool. So those soluble solids can be separated by fractional crystallization. Mm -hmm. Example is obtained from 2006, paper two, number 14. Define the term a solute. A solute is a substance that dissolves in a solvent. Then Roman number two, saturated solution. 
A saturated solution is a solution which cannot dissolve any more solute at a given temperature. The solubility of potassium chloride and potassium nitrate at a certain temperatures are shown in the table below. We are given temperatures in degrees Celsius, solubility per 100 grams of water, then solubility of potassium nitrate per 100 grams of water. The values are in the table. Roman number one, plot on the same axis a graph of solubility against the temperature for solubilities of potassium chloride and potassium nitrate. Before you look for the scale, you have to draw the axis. You have to leave two centimeters on the vertical axis and two centimeters on the horizontal axis. Then you put an arrow, leave two centimeters on the horizontal axis. Put an arrow, and then you write the title of your graph. Remember we are told you to plot the, on the same axis a graph of solubility against temperature for the solubilities of potassium chloride and potassium nitrate. So you begin from a graph. A graph of solubilities of potassium chloride and potassium nitrate against temperature. So what is on the vertical axis is mentioned first and then the mentioned later is on the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis we have solubilities of potassium chloride. So solubilities of potassium chloride and potassium nitrate you put the units, grams per 100 grams of water against temperature. You put the units in the brackets degrees Celsius. The units in the brackets degrees now you, you make a division of two centimeters, two centimeters, even after two centimeters you put a dash, then you come on the horizontal axis, you do the same, a dash even after two centimeters or even after two boxes. When you are labeling axis, always leave the first box or the first centimeter close to the axis to be used for putting the values. Now, to look for the scale, you go back to the table and look at the highest value. The highest value for both is 102. Now count the divisions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Stop on the 10, and then you say the 10th division should accommodate the highest value in our table. The highest value is 102. If the 10th division accommodates 102, what about the first one? Will accommodate how much? Over 10, and the answer is 10.2. So for easy scale, we can truncate and then take our 10. All we can use 10.2 or 10.5 or a point zero. I can choose 10 as my scale. So 10, the first division, the, the beginning is at zero. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 
seventy, eighty, ninety, one hundred, one hundred ten. The highest value on your graph should be slightly higher than the value in the table. Let us go to the horizontal axis. Again, how many divisions? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven divisions equaling to the highest value in the temperature column or row. The highest value is 57. So one is equal to 57 over seven, and the answer is 8.4. So for this case, we can choose the easiest scale. If it is eight or nine, we can use 10. So now the scale we have chosen is 10. 10, and the beginning point is zero. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. Now we are going to plot. We are going to begin with the potassium chloride against the temperature. The temperature is zero against 27.9. How do we locate 27.9 on our scale? We get the value in the table divided by our interval is 10. The scale is 10, which is equal to 2.79. I have two big boxes and then eight small ones. This is the same as 1, 2.8. 0.5678. I go to the next. The next is 11 on temperature against 32. Again, as we explained earlier, 32 divided by 10, it will be 3.2. Three big ones and two small ones. The same to the horizontal axis is C. 11 over 10, which is 1.1. So I have a big one, one point one small one. Moving up to meet it at 3.2, 1, 2, 3.2, which is here. You go on dividing, 15, again it's 32. Mm. 30, again it's 36. Point 0.5 in the middle here. 40, again is 40, 43, again is 50, 43, again is 50, 45, again is 57, 45, And then we draw a curve, solubility curve. You don't use a lula, use your free hand. Now this is potassium chloride. We go to potassium nitrate. Zero against 14. This time we can use an X. 11. Against 21.5, 21.5, 15, against 25, against 25, 30, against 43, 30, Against 43. 40. Against 63. 50. Against 84. Mm -hmm. 57. Against 102. Against 102. And then we draw the curve. Don't use the lula. These are the solubility curves. Bye.
back to the question. Roman number two, state which one of the two solids has a solubility which increases less rapidly with the increase in the temperature. So when you look at the two graphs for potassium nitrate and potassium chloride, potassium nitrate is more soluble than potassium chloride. The one which increases less rapidly with the temperature is potassium chloride. Roman number three, Determine the temperature at which the solubilities of the two solids are equal. You come at the graph and look at where the two graphs intersect. So they are intersecting at 20, 21, 22, 23, at 23 degrees Celsius. See, a saturated solution of potassium nitrate at 30 degrees Celsius was cooled to 5 degrees Celsius. Calculate the number of moles of potassium nitrate crystals formed. So you come to your graph, come at 30 degrees, look for the solubility at 30, and the solubility is 23. The solubility is 43. At 30 degrees Celsius, the solubility of potassium nitrate is equal to 43 grams per 100 grams of water. Now you come to 5 degrees. Again, you move up. And across to get the, the, the solubility. The solubility is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So at 5 degrees Celsius, the solubility is equal to 17 grams per 100 grams of water. So now let us calculate the mass of potassium nitrate that solidified out during cooling. So this is the same as 43 minus 17, which is equal to 26 grams of potassium nitrate. But they have told us to calculate the moles of potassium nitrate. Now we have to go direct to the relative formula mass of potassium nitrate. Remember we said a mole of any substance is numerically equal to the relative formula mass. So RFM of potassium nitrate, this is the same as potassium plus nitrogen plus three atoms. Potassium is 39 plus 14 plus 16 times three. This is the same as 39 plus 14, plus 48, and the answer is 101. So having gotten this, how many moles are in this? We say the mole of any substance is numerically equal to the molecular mass. Therefore, 101 grams of potassium nitrate contain one mole. What about the mass we obtained that crystallized out? 26 grams of potassium nitrate will contain, we cross multiply, one times 26 over 101, which is equal to 0 0.257 moles. Example two is from 1987, paper one, number 15. 10 grams of Saturated sodium chloride solution was evaporated and 60 grams of solid sodium chloride was left. The solubility of sodium chloride is, we are told A is equal to 6 times 100 over 10, B, 6 times 100 over 4 grams, C, 6 times 100 over 16, and D, 10 times 100 over 16. So for such numbers, for calculating solubility, you must be having the mass of the solvent and also mass of the solute. 
In this example, we don't have mass of the solvent, but we have the mass of the solute. So, solute plus a solvent, we said is equal to the uniform mixture, which is a solution. We are told 10 grams of a saturated solution, 10 grams. When evaporated, 60 grams of solid. So this is a solute. We don't have mass of the solvent. So mass of the solvent is equal to 10 minus 6 grams, which is equal to 4 grams. So we said solubility is the amount of a solid required to saturate 100 grams of a solvent. This means that 4 grams of a solvent dissolves only 6 grams of sodium chloride. What about 100 grams of the solvent will dissolve? We close multiply 6 times 100 over 4 grams of sodium chloride. And our answer is B. The next example is from 1999, paper 2, number 6. The solubility of hydrated copper 2 sulfate in moles per liter at various temperatures is shown in the figure 2 below. On the vertical axis, we have solubility in moles per liter. Then on the horizontal axis, we have temperature. Determine the solubility of hydrated copper to sulfate at 80. As I told you, you come to 80 degrees Celsius, move up. It is at this plot. Then come across to get its solubility. So the solubility is 2. 2 moles per liter. Part B. Calculate the solubility of hydrated copper to sulfate in grams per 100 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius. We are told hydrogen is equal to 1, oxygen 16, sulfur 32, and copper 64. So from the graph, we obtained our solubility of hydrated copper sulfate as equal to 2 moles per liter. So we have to convert the moles into grams for part B and also liter in, in 100 grams. Let us first convert a liter in 100 grams. In the previous lessons, I told you one liter is equal to one cubic decimeter is equal to a thousand cubic centimeters. So this is the same as two moles per a thousand cubic centimeters. So we can convert a thousand into grams by using density. So density of water is equal to mass over volume. So the mass is the same as density times volume. This is the same as one times a thousand, which is equal to a thousand grams. So to write the solubility of hydrated copper sulfate, this is the same as two moles per a thousand grams. But we are told they want it at a hundred grams. So if a thousand grams of water dissolves two moles of copper two sulfate. What about a hundred grams of water? Will it dissolve? We cross multiply two times a hundred over a thousand, which is equal to 0 0.2 moles of copper sulfate. 
So how do we write this? This is the same as 0 0.2 moles per 100 grams of water. Now we have to convert the 0 0.2 moles into grams. Now we have to convert the 0 0.2 moles into grams. So the moment they talk of grams, we go direct to relative formula mass of hydrated copper sulfate. Hydrated copper sulfate is written like this, 0.5 waters. So this is the same as RFM of copper sulfate, 0.5 waters. This is copper plus sulfur plus four atoms of oxygen, plus 10 atoms of hydrogen, plus five atoms of oxygen. This is 64 plus 32 plus four times 16 plus one times 10 plus five times 16. And the answer is 250. So we said a mole of any substance is numerically equal to the relative formula mass of that substance or compound. So one mole of hydrated copper sulfate contains 250 grams. What about 0 0.2 moles? of copper sulfate will contain we close multiply 250 times 0 0.2 over 1 which is equal to 50 grams so our solubility is equal to 50 grams per 100 grams of the solvent, which is water. Answer. The last example is from 1995, paper 2, number 12. Explain what is meant by saturated solution. A saturated solution is a solution which cannot dissolve any more solute at that given temperature. Part B, describe how the solubility of potassium chloride can be determined. Dissolve potassium chloride in a known amount of water. Add more potassium chloride to saturate the solution. Transfer the saturated solution into a weighed evaporating dish. This is the evaporating dish. of mass M naught where the dish together with the solution and note the mass M1. Evaporate the solution to dryness to obtain crystals of potassium chloride. Then you weigh the dish together with the crystals. And note the mass. M2. Now calculate the solubility of potassium chloride from mass of water. You can call it MW is equal to mass of the saturated solution together with the dish minus mass of the evaporating dish with the crystals, which is equal to M1 minus M2.
mass of potassium chloride that dissolved to saturate the solution is equal to M2, mass of the dish with the crystals minus the empty dish. Therefore, M1 minus M2 grams of water dissolved M2 minus M0 grams of potassium chloride. What about 100 grams of water will dissolve We cross multiply 100 times M2 minus M0 over M1 minus M2 grams of potassium chloride per 100 grams of water. Tu 
Kuwani sembera Ngambia kankupa wa mazina Zina Kuwani sembera Kuzo na muziki Kuwa zika tunda Kuwenga ya kawabu na mu Nafa ya tuwe suwi Kuzo na muziki Kuwa zika tunda Kuwenga ya kawabu na mu Nafa ya tuwe suwi Kuzo na muziki 